So I'm going to latch onto that testimony, um, and they didn't know, but the Lord knew. So what happened, I shared it with you quickly. So a few years ago, I really experienced the Lord telling me, I must finish working with my, um, and with Bedank, I must resign my job uh, working at the church with a student ministry. He wants me to go back into the entertainment industry, singing, acting, that type of thing. And um, because a few years prior to that, he spoke to me also and said, I want you to lay this dream down like Abram laid down, down Isaac. So I gave it up, I left my agent, um, and it's crazy because it's a really tough industry. So it's, it's quite um, exciting to tell people you left the industry because the Lord told me to. And to go to your father who paid for your tertiary education, to go, Father, I'm completely stepping away from what I've been pursuing during my first shows and concerts at the school since I'm like 14 years old. And here, you know, years later, you're like, no, I'm giving it up because the Lord told me to. But that's the thing. We either live for the opinion of the Lord or we don't. There's no competition. I can't live for the Lord and the people around me. I need to decide whose opinion is the dream of my heart, who is my desire to please. Anyway, so a few years later, the Lord is like, Mariette, here's a ram in the bush, you know, like he gave for Abram. I want you to go back to the entertainment industry. Um, and um, I'm just uh, trying to decide which parts of the test me to nudge, what to leave, what to go on. Um, and so I go, I go uh, so I resign, I'm like, people, the Lord's calling me back, I'll stay a few months, and then I'm, you know, moving to Joburg. Um, so in that time, the Lord's like, resign, I go, yes, Lord, and then he says, I want you to move to Johannesburg. So he's speaking to me through dreams, through different people confirming it directly, or different ways he was speaking and confirming it. Um, and that's the thing, guys, if you want to make sure that it was the Lord, just ask him. If you're unsure and you want to make sure, ask him. Holy Spirit, will you confirm whether I'm hearing correctly? He wants to, his desire is greater for you that you walk in his will than your desire is. So be of good faith and be encouraged. God wants to give you peace so that you by faith can obey him. And if you're unsure, just ask him about it. Pray, pray. Like they said, keep on pressing in until you hear what the Lord says. So um, I experienced the Lord telling me, finish, you know, with the student ministry, go back in the entertainment industry, move to Johannesburg. So I started doing that. Um, so I, I thought, let me make a little list of people I can stay with, while, you know, when I'm in Johannesburg. Because how the entertainment industry works is you need to do random jobs to get an income so that you can spend money going for auditions for work that you will not get. It's funny, it's true. So the people you see on magazines, that's an actress and something, she's like one out of the 200 that, that got the job. The other 199 just keep on like waitressing or doing whatever while they make money to spend on petrol money to go for interviews slash auditions for work you just 99% won't get. Anyway, so I'm like, yes, Lord, here we go. Um, and then I experienced, so I'm trying to make a list at that stage. I thought maybe if I get 10 names and I ask those 10 people for two weeks at each, you know, on a couch or on a bed, then it's at least a few weeks, you know, that I'm now in my 30s in a random town, a random part of South Africa without any income, without a family, without any job and any place to stay. But at least I'll have a place to stay a little bit because I'm a planner. I'm an organizer. I, people, if I could plan when I go to PP in 2080 on a Thursday, I would do it. Because people go, oh, you're so lucky, you're so spontaneous. I'm like, sure, do not take away the faith that I have to put out to walk in God, what he calls me for. None of us get skipped. There is a price. There is a price that we have the privilege to pay because he paid the ultimate price. So um, the Lord, I'm trying to make that little list, and I feel the Holy Spirit say, Mariette, I don't want you to ask those people for a place to stay. I want people to walk up to you in Johannesburg and go, hey, do you want to stay with us next? And I say to him, no, thank you. And I keep on making my little list. Because <laughs> I was quite nervous. I thought it was exciting and faithful enough, like challenging, you know, in your 30s to move to a strange part of a nation without a fixed income, without a family, without anything there. And um, again, I felt the Holy Spirit a few days later. I'm trying to make a list because I'm like, whoa, some of the Joburg Jumis have moved away, but this one's cousin sister is still there. Maybe she'll remember me from grade five. So I'm trying to make this little list. 
And again, the Holy Spirit says, Mariette, I don't want you to contact those people and ask. I want people to walk up to you and offer a place to stay. And again, I went, no, thank you. Because I'm like, oh, I could make that up. Maybe that wasn't the Holy Spirit. No, I'm nervous enough, so I'm continuing. And let's just pause it there. Ladies, there's no time for it to go into it now, but there are many other times before that where the Lord asked me to do things in faith, where I did it. And each time you do it, you, your faith grows. You recognize his voice later, quicker and quicker. And that's why I say, the way you grow in hearing God's voices, start by practicing to respond to his voice by faith. There's a simple prayer that you pray. You go, Holy Spirit, and you can pray this every day of your life, will you make me sensitive to discern what is your voice, what is my thoughts, and what is the enemy's voice? Because when I understand it's the enemy, I can take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ, as the word says. But if I don't know it's the enemy speaking to me, I will just think it's my thoughts and submit to it by accident. Because anything you don't chase away, you submit to it. That day with the shoulder with Jock, I was telling the ladies, I came down from the attic and I went to my dad, 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 God just healed Jock's shoulder, it's loose. And then he went, wow. And I said, let's quickly pray for your gout on your foot because he couldn't stand, he had so much pain and he had issues with confessing pain. So for him to not be able to be stand, a normal person would be in the ER. And he was sitting there and he said, please pray for my foot. And as I put my hand on his foot, immediately as I started praying for the gout to leave, the enemy planted thoughts in my head. I literally heard, it's not going to happen, and you're just going to offend your dad and make his heart even harder towards the Lord. Why are you praying? I ignored it, because we don't have to listen to the enemy, and I said for the foot to be healed in Jesus' name, God be gone. Lord, we just release your kingdom into this foot now in Jesus' name. Amen. Test it, dad. How does it feel? Guys, I remember it clear as a bell. He went, my bookie, wow, as you put your hand on my foot, you hadn't started to pray, I felt the pain just leave. But it's so, in that moment, I could have listened to the enemy. I could have said, yo, dad, let's just wait on the Lord. But Jesus is like, I pay, just be obedient to me, like apply the word. So it's important goals that we, we, the Holy Spirit is the helper. Anytime you want, you go, Lord, I'm confused over a situation. I'm overwhelmed or whatever it is. You go, Lord, please show me what is your voice so I can obey it, just so I can discern because he speaks in our thoughts most of the times. Here and there, it's audibly. God still speaks audibly, just like in the word. But it's the same with the enemy. He also can speak an out you know, a thought that just pops up into your heart. And if you don't know it's him, you're not going to take authority over him. If there's a scallum, a criminal walking into your house that wants to rob you, if you know it's a criminal, it's easy. You go, get out in Jesus' name. And you grab your phone, you call the police. But if you do not know that that's the enemy, you will make him tea. Sit, are you here for my husband? Are you one of my friends, children, children's friends? Are you a neighbor? Just because of lack of discernment, not because there's not authority to help you. So ladies, we must press in and go, Lord, show me what are my thoughts? What's the enemy so I can take th those thoughts captive? And what is, you, what is your voice so I can obey it? Because the quicker you obey, the quicker you recognize, the more the testimonies come. So there were places where the Lord, small things, one step at a time, asked me to do something by faith. And that's how your faith grows and it grows. So fast forward back to me with my little list and the Lord's like, you resign at your job, go back into the entertainment industry and move to Johannesburg. So now I'm here with my little list. And the third time, a few days later, again, I'm with my little list trying to squeeze names into it. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, it's okay, Mariette. You can ask those people for a place to stay. I'm not going to love you less, but I want to show you something about how I feel about you. It's literally what I heard. And then I was like, Okay, and then I was super excited. I went, okay, okay, yes, Lord, I've got faith, let's do it. So a short while after that, I'm at a wedding, and I tell a friend from Joburg that's at the wedding in Cape Town, guess what, the Lord's speaking to me about coming to Joburg now. Pretty soon I'm still waiting to figure out when, but he says I'm coming. And without me finishing a sentence, she goes, are you going to come stay, stay with me and my child and our, my husband for the first month? 
I went, yes, thank you. And afterwards she said, that was so weird. She never does anything like that. She checks with her husband, with the Lord, with a calendar, and then she'll offer like that. And I was like, well, the Lord seems to do what he wants. Um, so, the, and then, um, okay, so in July of 2016, the 1st of July, my car, like two, two suitcases, a laptop bag, and my handbag, I'm driving up. My mother's super nervous because I let them in on the journey. My parents, I told them I'm doing summer by faith. Um, and she was like, just take a sleeping bag. And I thought, mother, if the kite doesn't fly, a sleeping bag's not going to help. But for her to feel better, I also packed in a sleeping bag. So I'm driving to Johannesburg, and I was psyching myself going, up going, but yet, even if the Lord only provides the following month's um, place to stay on the 31st of July, he would still not have been late. So you don't have to entertain the spirit of fear that will come knocking. It's his job until Jesus comes back, then it's Clark. You're not, because who of you, when you went to school, and during the first period, you were like, what if the bus doesn't come? I must maybe make a plan. Did you do that? Second period. Oh, sure, but what if my lift, what if I, die? oh, my mother's not going to come. She said she would come after school, but I, second break. Excuse me, teacher, ma'am, how do you drive home? Can you go past my house? I'm just so scared my mother will just, she says she's coming. What if she's just super unfaithful and just never comes? Can I? So I was psyching myself up driving to Johannesburg saying, Marie, you've got this revelation. You're not going to entertain this fear and pretend like God is not faithful um, because you know he is. You're going to stand in faith. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man, come on. Okay. So I get to Johannesburg and, um, and, and, and it's really tough. Um, people keep on going, will you stay now? You know, you should go stay in Parkers for just four million rands a month. And da -da 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 -da. The amount of what it costs per month, uh, what my ears heard was like your, your five rand savings, that's what you can spend. So you can live here for one month without any food and then go home. So this fear starts creeping in saying, see what it costs you, it's never going to work for you. I email, I contact the agents who you have to apply to become part of an agency so they send you for auditions. So you have to go for an audition for a company that will send you for auditions for work that you probably won't get. But we're now over here. And the companies respond, oh, our books are full. Thank you. We've got six like you already on our books. Thank you. You know, your age, your length, your height, your talents. No, you can't even come for audition for us to send you for auditions. So I'm like, that's a rejection before you can re begin to <laughs> reject it. Before you can reject it, it's like, near Han. Um, so I'm like, it's okay. There are more agencies on the list. And they go, no, thank you. No, thank you. And while this is happening, I have a few things also. So it's getting crazy in a few days in... I'm sitting there in front of a laptop in my friend's home, and another email pops back. Um, I don't have another place to stay yet. It's only a week or two in. But like for the thousandth time in those two weeks, the thoughts have come. This is not going to work out. And you are being such a bad representative, not just for your own name, but for the kingdom of heaven, because you told people God told you to come. You are embarrassing yourself and the kingdom of heaven. The enemy kept on going. Again, not like this. You are embarrassing yourself. No. I, what if it doesn't work out? Why, what if I'm such, you know, don't I, am I not embarrassing my father? You know, in your tone of voice, the enemy is coming, but Holy Spirit is so faithful. He fights for you. He fights for you, but what will you choose? Because we get to choose to whom will we submit. That's why we need to keep on going, Holy Spirit, help me discern what are my thoughts? What are the enemy's ones so we can take authority over it and declare the word of God that will set me free over it? And what is you so I can obey you? So this one day I'm getting this email and it says, no, thank you again. Like you can't even come for audition so we can send you for auditions. You can't come for an interview so we can see if we can send you for interviews. And just the fear grips me and I start crying hysterically like I'm just sobbing and just shame and fear grips my heart. And I stand there in this flat in Ravonia in the north of Johannesburg just crying and just thinking, Lord, I'm such an embarrassment and I this this to me because I, and I'm crying and I'm full of fear and I'm full of shame. And the you know, thoughts come, the enemy, like he kicks a man when he's down. That thing comes from him that say, because when he gets you when you're vulnerable and then he's starts with those questions, with the shame, with the accusations. And that's why it's important. She said, when you're vulnerable, you start saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I will praise him. Because as you declare the truth, lies have to flee. 
Or we can choose to go, oh, I submit, oh, I submit, yes, yes, that's true, and rehearse, nurse, curse, and rehearse. We get to choose. Who will you submit to? So I'm standing there sobbing my heart out, really experiencing such fear, such shame. And while I'm very shamefully, fearfully crying, thinking, oh, I'm such a, I'm like putting God's name to shame because I told people it's him and no, it's not going to work. And And the Holy Spirit taps me on the shoulder and he goes, what is this? Literally, it's what I heard. What is this? And I go, no, no, sorry, I'm lying. He started with, he, he tapped me on the shoulder, I'm hysterical, and he went, oh, Mariette, did I tell you to resign from your previous job? Did you do that by faith and obedience? I went, <laughs> yeah. He goes, oh, did I ask you to leave ministry and go back into the entertainment industry? No, yeah, yes, that was you. And he goes, oh, and did I tell you to move to Johannesburg and not ask anybody else for a place to stay? Because I want to send people. And I went, yes. And then he went, so what is this? You know, what's the meltdown? And I, so I thought about it, and I went, oh, it's me submitting to a spirit of fear instead of you, Holy Spirit. I go, what? Okay. And then I felt like he, he was asking me, so now I want you to respond instead of to this fear. He invited me, come and respond by faith right now in this moment. Just prophetically, just start, just move. I go, okay. Now very calm, wiping the... I felt him inviting me, ask me for the most awesome place to stay that you can think of. Because the one moment you're crying about the fact that you will have no job, no income, no place to stay, no nothing, and the next moment you're like, let me rather respond by faith. And it's ridiculous, because one time, the moment you're hysterical, and now casually you're thinking, oh, what's the most gifted place I could ever stay in my life? I'm like, oh, some people want a big place, some people want a this and that, and I'm like, Okay, I've got it. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you for a Heidi Kamer, a Heidi room. So Heidi is a girl on TV, a little kiddie story, and she lived in an attic, which is basically a loft. She lived in a loft on, on hay bales. They made her a little bed of hay bales with windows that would look out over the outside world. So I asked him, I want a Heidi Kamer, because me and him, we had a history of wanting to Heidi Kamer, like basically a loft. Uh, in the past, and okay, so time goes on, and um, a few days later, we had a praise and worship, and we, um, like, you know, helping with rolling up the cables, and so this one girl comes to me, and she goes, hi, Mariette, I'm like, hi, and she's like, so me and my husband were wondering, so apparently, you are staying with those people this month, we were wondering if maybe, please, you would come stay with us next, and I went, yes, thank you, and then she went, and I was so shocked. I'm like, why would you be excited? You're like married for a year or so. And she goes, um, we don't, we have like a one bedroom flat, but we can convert the, the lounge into like a room for you if you don't mind. And I went, I don't mind anything. And she went, yay. And I went, yay with her. Why would newly married people be excited for me to take over their lounge for a month? But you're just like, Lord does what he wants. I'm like, yay, thank you. This is awesome. And before I could move there, another girl said, oh, please, Marie, don't you want to come stay with us for two weeks before you go there? Because my husband's away for work, so if you could just help me in the evening with the babas, oh, we'd so appreciate that, please. I went, pleasure, sure. So I'm staying from there. I go to Sophie. We stay there for two weeks, and after that, I moved to the other couple, and um, random GPS, I have no idea which direction, because I come from Cape Town, and Joburg doesn't have mountains, so you have no idea where he's north, but later you realize that big building, there you go left, so it's me on GPS, um, very clueless, driving in circles, because I wasn't used to a GPS, I would miss it, and now I'm driving there, and I'm like, the address is here, I've never been there in my life, and I'm, um, we get up, this, uh, go a few, fl- you know, the flat is like, up the third floor or something, and we're walking, and they go, welcome, oh, you can just go there, and we'll quickly get your other things, I'm like, okay, so I'm there with my, my suitcases, and I start going up these wooden steps, and in my middle, as I reach the following part, I look to my left, and it's a giant wooden deck, loft, a giant loft, with the little stoopies, windows, looking out across Joburg, with a bed built for me on pallets, 
because they didn't have, they borrowed a, a truck from a friend to get pallets and borrowed, and they built me a bed with my little ensuite. So this giant loft with windows looking out and there, and as in the middle, I see it, and the Holy Spirit grips my heart, and he goes, I know, I know you, I know your heart. And I'm like, Lord, you would go through this, like with all the important things on your schedule in this world, and you would do this to show me something about who you are and something about my heart. It's like, yes, because God knows you. And he knows a thing you haven't even spoken because it's sore and you're tired of the disappointment. Or maybe you've never had the guts to share that dream with him. But he knows it. He knows you and he wants to partner with you. But you and I get to choose. Will we by faith not say yes to the fear but take a risk by faith? Because it's a risk by faith. That, that's how faith works. So what happens is the following people start um, offering, and later I have like a little list. In the beginning, it was easy. One at a time would offer where I need to stay, and then I started clicking, oh, Holy Spirit is just sending me to the houses and the families where I need to be when for what he wants to do in their lives and also in mine. And then at a stage, like two or three people offer the month like at the same time, and I'm like, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. I want to obey you. What must I do? And he went, ask me, which couple? I went, oh. Lord, to which couple must I go next month? And then he would highlight, I would just sense on my heart, that specific name. So that's how I knew, okay, this month here, this month there. And then what happens is, um, I stay with these awesome people, Handa and Arthur, I meet them through, um, through church community, like she said, um, show for Johannesburg, and they were like, um, do you want to come stay with us? And, and so I stay with them. Uh, February of 2017, at the end of the month, they go, we'd like to know if you don't want to stay with us longer. And I'd went, oh, I'd love to. But there's another couple where I'm supposed to go to. And they were like, okay, cool. Rather obey the Lord and go there. And I said, oh, but I can come back after them. And they were like, yay. And I was like, yay. Because she was a Christian pastoral counselor. She still is. Like sometimes at this stage, the Lord, I was doing stand-up comedy for her life. Um, and I had an agent and I was going for auditions. My point is just God is faithful and he's able, but he's after your heart. And then it's in the time of the shaking, like it, she said, that we have this opportunity to go. I'm clinging to you because you all I have to cling to, but actually you've always only been the only thing I could cling to. I'm just now not deceived because the empty, hollow things, they fall away when he is the one to cling to. And then he does the thing, he does, he brings the breakthroughs, but he's after your heart. Anyway, so what happens was during this time, I keep on feeling the Holy Spirit telling me, I want you to stay um, with, these with this couple. I'm like, okay, but you know they have to WhatsApp me to offer it. So I don't know why you keep on telling me. And then it didn't come to pass. I don't hear anything. I'm like, oh, well, at a stage, I get a message from this couple. She goes, hi, Mariette. Oh. We've been wanting you for a while now to come stay with us, but my husband was busy with work and an MBA, so we couldn't ask you earlier, but can you want to come stay with us? And I was like, sure, I can come in next year, March. She goes, March? I'm like, yes, December, I'm here, January, I'm there. So God was like stretching it out. And they went, okay. So with that, sometimes the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you about something, and it's not going to come to pass immediately. And between your flesh and the enemy, the thoughts will pop up you didn't hear correctly, or just stop trusting. It wasn't the Lord. But sometimes he'll tell you something prior, like quite a while, like she shared. It was a 10-year journey for them. And this testament, it was a few months, a few months later, she messaged me. But some of the stories are quite longer. But you can hold on to the Lord. And if you're unsure if you heard correctly, ask him again. Ask him for a confirmation if you heard correctly. He loves for us to be in his will. So ask if you're unsure. Anyway, so I'm with Handa and Arthur in February of 2017, and they said, do you want to stay the next month? And I go, oh, I'd love to, but I can't. I have to stay with this couple in March. And they go, do you want to come back after that? Or, you know, I offer that, and they went, yes. And I went, yes. She was a Christian counselor, so at that stage, if I'm not in front of my laptop, organizing shows, she would like grab me under the room, and we quickly pray for some inner healing or deliverance. And whoops, then I go back to my laptop, and she goes back to her counseling was glorious. And then I go to my room and I'm, Lord, 
why would I move from this part of Johannesburg where I finally know a few things, how to get to church, how to get to auditions, where is the chemist and where is the ticket, to a completely different part of Johannesburg, I'm a quite practical person, where I know nothing, just to the following months to move back here, that's quite impractical, I don't mind, I'm just curious. Why am I go then? Why didn't I go to there, you know, and then end up here? And the Holy Spirit says, I'm sending to you, you to them for that month to be a prophetic seed. I heard him go, prophetic seed, and I go, that's exciting. I wonder what it is that, you know, through my prophetic, you know, through my prophetic action, my obedience going there, that you want to plant there in there. You want to add to them that they don't have. So now I'm in my room excited. You know, it's February, I'm living here. March, I'll be living there, coming back after that to this part of Johannesburg, which I know and love, but I'm going there for prophetic seed. So I go, can we start praying for it now, Lord? I'm curious. Oh, what can I pray for them for? Oh, I know they want children. They haven't had children yet. Ooh, and the light, bulb goes, the light bulb goes on. Just a knowing, just a sense in my heart. I just knew that I knew. God is sending me there so they can get pregnant. Yay, they're going to have children. Woo! And you don't have to have your breakthrough co to contend for somebody else. Because single Mariette is standing in faith for her husband and her children. But that's got nothing to do with God wanting to use me for them. So I'm like, the kingdom will come while I run. I will invite anybody and everybody along with me. Run with me by faith. I'm not calling you because I'm at the winning venstrip. Because I'm at the end, I'm calling you because God is calling you. And God wants to use you and me to call others to saying, don't follow me, follow Jesus with me. That's evangelism, girls. As you say to people, I follow Jesus, you want to follow him with me. So, I move in with them there in March, and I'm like, now you gonna, and we start sharing testimonies, and it turns out they can't have children, and the doctor said, I can't send you for IVF. There's nothing to work with. You can't have children. So her and her husband contending for years and years at this stage, look at each other and go, okay, now it's just official that the Lord must make us pregnant. Because everybody always says, oh, look at the Lord, the Lord made us, they're like, it's official, the Lord must make us pregnant. So they're standing in faith and then they share some of their stories. I share some of my standing in faith stories. Like she said, you become vulnerable towards people that you are safe with and they come alongside you and they believe with you and they pray and fast with you. Um, and so uh, what happens is uh, it turns out that I stay there for April also. And then um, after that, I only went back to the other people. And you'll find out now why I'm there in April. So during this time of auditions uh, and doing shows, I did a little bit of flowers for functions here and there for extra income. So you can spend it on petrol money to go for auditions for work that you wouldn't get. Um, not like one or two things. Anyway. Um, and what happens is one um, Friday, I did flowers for a function. Afterwards, there's two flowers, um, bunches of flowers. And I asked the Holy Spirit, who do you want to give this to? Girls, we can ask God anything. You can go to the shop now, stand in front of the chocolate rack aisle and go, Lord, what's that friend or that bully or that colleague or that person? What's their favorite chocolate? Because I can hear your voice. And you love using us to show other people that you know them and you care about them. You can, by faith, buy the chocolate and drop it off at their house. The enemy cannot hold you back. He's overcome at the cross. The Lord's not going to hold us back. He's the one calling us. Guess who's the only one that can hold you back from partnering and running with the Lord? She's in your seat. Hmm? It's you. So, it's a very simple thing. It's a question. By faith, just ask the question. I go, Holy Spirit, who would you like to give these two bunches to? Because it's after the function, I can give it to anybody. And he says to me, no, give it to Sunel. I'm like, okay. Taking it back home where I'm living. So the Saturday morning, one morning in April of 2017, I'm putting the flowers in the vases for her. And I quickly go to my room to get one of those swatches, those cards, like an example to paint with. You know that example? So I write there, and then thought pops up. Holy Spirit goes, leave that one little pot open. Girls, let it become so normal to work with him because you're this team, co-laborers with Christ, co-heirs, co-laborers. We are a team. 
It becomes so normal. You don't even pray, Lord, did I? You just go, okay, and you leave a bit open and you keep on writing. Just a little note. So it's this pastel kind of thing with these pastel light-colored flowers, and I put it in the vase and I, with a note, and they come in to the room, and they were out that morning, and I'm like, good morning, guys. I'm like, listen, my friend, this is for you. It's from the Lord. And she starts crying. She goes, oh, thank you so much. She's got a very soft, soft heart. She goes, oh, thank you. And I'm like, it's a pleasure, but it's really the Lord. I asked him who he wanted to give it to, and out of Johannesburg, he clearly said you, so this is for you. And we hug, and we say, yes, thank you, and I go to my room, and the next moment, I hear, and I turn around, and she's crying again, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what she wants to share. And she holds up the stick. She goes, I I'm pregnant, and my knees gave way. I fall to the ground, and I just, over and over, I just went, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we're in the corridor, and her husband joins. She goes, I told my dad, and we start sharing. You know, and she goes, yes, my sister has been praying and fasting once a week for years for me to have children because her younger sister at that stage already had three. So we were a team. I was just part of a puzzle. A friend, his grandmother for the first time in her life received like a word from the Lord in the old age home, sent him a message earlier that year, this year you will have a child. You know, we start sharing these things. And she says, so on that note, what is the thing that you and, you and I are praying and fasting for for somebody else that we've had received many, many years ago already? Her sister had children, so she's like, oh, then I'll pray and fast for you to have children. What are the things that you and I are contending for that we have taken for granted years already that somebody else is still hoping for? Just the question. <laughs> for all of us. Long story short, we stand there, and the next moment she goes, because I still ask the Lord why specifically March 2017. But anyway, we continue, and the next moment she says, we stand there with our Thanksgiving service in the corridor. She goes, March 2010, we went off the pill thinking we are gonna start with the family. But seven years on the dot, March 2017, God did a miracle. Because in the word seven, often it's symbol, uh, the symbol of it is perfection. It is done, it is fulbring, it is finished. And I say to them, oh, oh, I've got something to tell you. The Lord said to me, I'm, living, I'm moving to you guys for the month of March 2017 to be a prophetic seed for you to have children. So I've been praying and standing in faith for that. But we are a team. We just, those, those puzzle pieces. And in that moment, I can go, after that, I could also go to the little card. And I knew why the one piece was open. It was so I could say, by a geluk, congratulations. God even organized two bunches of flowers on the morning that his girl that's been standing in faith for seven years and crying out to God for seven years would find out that she's pregnant. And the doctor said, you can't medically get pregnant. I can't even send you for in vitro. There's nothing to work with. And their second little boy is three years old. Yo, glory to God. So if that's so, close your eyes. If that's you, if you need a miracle, if you are standing in faith for a miracle already or you want to stand in faith today, I want you to stretch out your hands and say, that's me. Holy Spirit, what you've done for my friends, Kunius and Al, I say, Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Every heart that is hungry, the faith that you gave me to stand in faith for their children, Lord, I stand in faith for these women, each one, each one that's crying out to you now, I say, yes, Lord, do it. I say, yes, Lord, do it. Do it. I say, yes, Lord, do it. Thank you that you assign your angels, Father, to make miracles for the glory of the name of Jesus. For the glory of the name of Jesus. You're the faithful God. You're the great I am. We ask for your mercy and grace to override every legal right, Lord, of the enemy and fulfill, Lord, fulfill, Lord, the promises that you've given. Yes and amen, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. So girls, oh, I wish I could share some more testimonies with you, but we can't because what we're going to do now is quickly share on how do I test whether what I'm experiencing is not just me that had a dream because I had pizza late last night. 
how do I check? Because the law doesn't leave us. His word is full of wisdom and truth. So earlier, my friend Francesca, Basitye, Francesca, she was asking me, hey, Marit, uh, we were talking, and I said, good question. Let me share that. So um, just quickly, um, for instance, you get a dream. Ne? When you have a dream, what you do the following morning is you say, Lord, what do I do with this dream? Pray about it. You say to him, Lord, do I pray about it? Do I share the dream with the person? What must I do? You can ask him if you're ever unsure. You just ask him. So how do we test whether what, there you are, my friend. How do we test when we experience something, whether it's the Lord or not? Number one, ask God. Number one, pray about it. Pray about it. You're experiencing the Lord tell you to take this job and not that one. Go. Be proactive. Don't sit there. No, I'm waiting. We're all waiting for you to come in faith, my child. Get out of the boat. So you go, Lord, I experience you are saying this or this to me. Will you confirm it for me? Does that make sense? Or that you're standing in faith for the rain to come. Go buy an umbrella. And when you pray, hold it out saying, Lord, this is me starting to come by faith, Lord, for it. Hallelujah. The Mia Fields. Google her marriage testimony is radical. Like she's got the most fun marriage testimony. The Lord challenged her. And then she, in the days that she would be down, she went to the shop and buy men's cologne. <laughs> Anyway, such a cool testimony how they got married. But the point is just like the Jericho march. There was a place by faith where they walked in silence. I mean, how's that going to let a wall fall? Well, if it's connected to obedience to the Lord, the wall will fall like it did. You know, in archaeology, they actually found that city. Anyway, the point is just, number one, ask God. If you experience the Lord is showing and you're not sure, ask him for confirmation. He will. Each time before I moved to Joburg or... or um, resigned my job, I would ask him, saying, Lord, this is what I experienced. Will you confirm it for me? For instance, when he said to me, my time in Joburg is done, move back to Cape Town, I said, confirm it to me, Lord, because that's quite a big move if I'm hearing incorrectly. And I kept on praying, praying, praying. And it was interesting for three or four weeks. Didn't share it with anybody. I wanted to hear from him. For three or four weeks, I kept on asking him. And then this one day I'm walking in that room with Anda and Arthur in Joburg, where I moved back to, and as I'm asking again, Lord, I'm still waiting on an answer. I will move, but I need to know what the um, word is you're giving me so I can obey you. He went, this one-liner, the ground that I send you to take has been taken. Later that week, my friends give me a lift to the airport, to Johannesburg, to come to Vintuk to do a show then. I was still doing shows. And me and her went to seating and praying for one another and for a few things. And she goes, shum to me. Not sure what this means, but I keep on seeing when I pray for you, your tent peg is lifted to move out of the ground, and it's your head, your main tent peg. And I said to her, the Lord said the ground that he sent me to take has been taken, and that's why you are seeing that. So my chumi, I'm you know, moving from Johannesburg again. God will confirm it. So number one, ask the Lord. Number two, test it. Or, uh, I'm saying number two, but it goes with number one. Test it according to the word of God. God is not going to speak against his word, so test it with the word. You feel that, like the sense, you must sow a thousand rand, it's your lost thousand rand, sow it into the single mother or a fostering mother's bank account. Test it. Go, Lord, what does the word of God say? Oh, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Okay, Lord. But what if I make a mistake? That's in alignment with your word. It's not a sin, but what if it's a mistake? My friend, God is the one that is calling us to go by faith. There has been times where I felt feel him to sow a certain amount into somebody's bank account, and I would sow it. And then before there was an opportunity, the Lord, there would be that same amount would be sown back into my account from other places. And I'm not saying your everything's perfect. There has been times where the Lord's provision for me was not through finances, was in other ways. So I'm not saying like everything is perfect and amazing and only prosperous. What I am saying is the more you start saying, Holy Spirit, lead me, my desire is not the wealth of this earth. It is to know you and to obey you. The more you will grow in hearing his voice and the testimonies will encourage you to encourage others to do the same. 
So test it. Test with the Lord what he says about something. For instance, we're going to do an exercise now. If the Lord, if you go, Yo, I feel I must send Sandy a message telling her that the Lord loves her. And you're like, ooh, Lord, I want to test that according to your word now. Let's see. What does the word of God say about me telling somebody that the Lord loves them? Oh, it's a commandment. Preach the gospel to all the earth. Make disciples. Oh, love people as I've loved you. Love your neighbor. Oh, so I'm being obedient to the word of God if I tell. So ask yourself, ask Holy Spirit, what's going to happen if I, do, if I do this thing by faith? And now you can say, yes, but Mariette, to send Sandy a message on WhatsApp saying that the Lord loves her, okay, it's not against the word because the word actually says, commandment, I must preach the gospel to all the world. And how do you preach the gospel? You go, God loves you so much that indeed Jesus Christ died on the cross for all your sin, all your brokenness. And if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that if it's true that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you're like a cool, okay, I'm applying the word of God when I tell somebody that the Lord loves them. But Marie, what if it was my plan to tell Sandy and not the Holy Spirit's plan to tell Sandy? Good question. Let's think about that. What's going to happen if you preach the gospel to somebody because you decided to? Oh, you are obeying the word of God. How's that for a win-win situation? What I'm saying is talk to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we might get an idea and it might come from our flesh, but we don't. Um, sorry, now for a moment you look a lot. Dark. Sorry, what's your name? Yeah. Hello, Anya. Sorry, you look a lot like my second year roommate, Fran. I'm my word. But maybe it's just the Holy Spirit highlighting you to me. I'll ask him what he wants to show to you. Because, guys, a lot of times that has happened, happens also the way that the Lord speaks. You will see somebody and they will remind you of somebody else. And then oftentimes it's a very simple, straightforward way that the Lord wants to remind you of that specific person because he wants you to reach out to them. But I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit in my own, like in my own bavissa and while we, but yeah, the Lord can highlight somebody just because I've seen you earlier today and you didn't look like my second year roommate, first year roommate at all. And just when I looked at you, I was like, is Fran in the meeting and she hasn't told me, but it's not, it's Anya. Holy Spirit, what would you like to tell Anya? Okay, so number one, you ask the Lord. Number two, test it according to his word. Like I said now, if that fear is there, but it's out of your flesh that you're going to tell somebody that the Lord loves them. Test it. Go, okay, wait, it's a commandment from, commandment from the Lord. So whether it's the Holy Spirit that spoke to me and whether I have a desire to remind somebody of the love of the Lord, both of that is obedience to the word. Test it to the word. Um, ask the Lord to confirm it. Number three, phone a friend. Ask somebody that has fruit of hearing and obeying the Lord to pray with you. And say to them, yo, I feel the Lord is calling me to do this or sow this or start this, but I'm not sure if it's out of my flesh or the Lord and I don't want to do dead works because we don't have that much time. So will you pray with me? And then um, the Lord says there's wisdom in the council of many. There's wisdom in community for us. So, um, yeah, so you don't have to just like, shoot out of the hip and go, oh, well, no, test it with the Lord, test it with the word, get community to, um, to pray with you. And the flip side of the coin, ladies, because we're going to get practical now, how do I share something with somebody else that I feel is of the Lord? You always start with, thus saveth the Lord, because New King James, this might gets more official. No, Rather, instead of saying, there's not a rule that says you can't say the Lord says, but just for me, what I've been um, passed on and I love sharing it, is what we can do is to say, I sense this on my heart for you. This is what I feel. Like, this is what I sensed when I prayed for you. Or this thought popped up in my heart when I was praying for you. So number one, you go, this is what I sensed. This is what I feel. You don't go, the Lord tells you. There are people, they're prophets, in the office of the prophet, they say the Lord says it. That's awesome. But for us, it's growing. We go, this is what I sensed. Number two, with that you go, I'm sharing this with you, but you've got a personal relationship with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Go test it with him. Does that make sense? So in humility, 
And in boldness, you submit and share a message with somebody and you say to them, go test it with the Lord. Because my heart, I know is pure, I'm, I'm trying to take risks and get out of the boat, but sometimes we're going to fly and sometimes we're going to sink. But I just want to please the Lord and honor and serve you, so I'm sharing this with you, but you go test it with the Lord. My friend Ratif, um, him and his wife, pastor, sheriff, are in table view, and they've been walking with the Lord for many years. I know this about them in the Lord's voice. He sends me a message the wild back at the end of it. Go submit it to the Lord, test it from the Lord. I'm just like loving just the wisdom and the humility with which this guy still operates. It's so beautiful. So ladies, what are we going to do?